If you're trying to build a form on Framer to collect a lot of information, that can be really overwhelming for a user. So you probably wanna create a multi-step form to break down that form into bite-sized chunks. The problem is there's no way to do this in Framer until now. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can build a real multi-step form in Framer, no embeds. Let's go. So here we are in Framer and I've got a bit of a placeholder set up for our form. So it's all ready to go. Now, usually when you add a form in Framer, you go to the insert menu, you go down to forms and then you drag in the Framer form builder. Now, what we're actually gonna do is we're going to go to the plugins tab at the bottom and we're going to search for the Framer forms plugin and we're gonna open this up. Now, Framer forms is essentially a plugin that lets you build more advanced forms in Framer that actually utilizes the native features of Framer form so it's not an embed or anything like that it just gives you extra power ups to your form so we'll click on new form here and we'll actually go ahead and create a multi-step form and that'll get added to our canvas and we'll just click out of this for now so when we actually look at the structure of this form here you'll notice it's just like a form and it's got regular inputs just like any other frame of form but there's a couple of extra things going on here Firstly, we have this component here, which is the multi-step form component, and we can essentially configure the settings for our multi-step form. So we need to set the last page. Uh, so when the form actually ends, we can also set a scroll to to make it extra smooth, especially if you've got a lot of content that might be overflowing. And we can even connect our Google Analytics to properly track how that form is progressing. So next, we actually have the layer tree here and the actual pages itself. So essentially within this form component that we have set up, we have a frame which is called pages. And then inside those pages, we have page one, page two, and page three. Now we can have as many pages as we want. And essentially a page is just grouped together by a stack here. So what we'll actually do is let's just drag this onto the canvas and let's put this in its spot and let's preview this. Now you'll notice essentially what's happening is it's taking us through each step of that form. And we can't actually continue that step until we've filled out the previous fields, especially if one is already required. So for example, on this location field here, we've got it set to required, which means I can't actually continue that step until it gets completed making this a true multi-step form. So let's go actually go ahead here and start styling our form just a little bit. So I'm gonna start with this input here. Let's actually just decrease the radius. I want it to be a little bit sharper. Uh, and let's change some of the colors here as well. Okay, so I've gone ahead here and just styled my form a little bit more. Now we're gonna add more to this, so don't worry just yet. But essentially we want to go ahead and just design and build our form, keeping in mind that each one of these sort of uh, frames here holds each specific page. So on page one, we might actually wanna have a title. So we might call this, uh, let's get your information and let's make this a little bit bolder. And we might actually wanna have a bit of a description underneath. Now, just for demonstrating this, we're just gonna remove page two for now. And we're going to just copy this submit button and put it off to the side. And let's also get rid of page three. So let's go ahead here and just continue styling our form. So let's actually add a bit of an icon in here as well. So I'm gonna drag and drop that here. And let's figure out what icon we can use. Pick a smiley face, why not? Okay, so our first step is we wanna collect our name and email. Let's just duplicate this and now let's rename this to be page two. And maybe in the second step, we wanna get a little bit more information about uh, where they're located. So what I can actually do is open up the Framer Forms plugin once again, go to form inputs and you'll see all these different inputs that I actually have available to add to my form. So in this case, I actually want to have a country selector. So I'm just gonna drag and drop that in here and let's go ahead and just update the styling here as well. Cool, let's add a couple more pages in here as well. So we'll call this page three and we'll rename this one to be something else. So we might say, this is what's your budget. And again, we wanna change this input. So I'm gonna drag in a dropdown input from the frame of forms menu. So we'll insert that on the canvas here and we'll get rid of that country input. Set the width to be 100% and we'll change our styling once again. 
Now you'll notice at this point, because our form is sort of starting to overflow on the canvas here, actually what I could do is just set the height of this because it's got a fixed height. I could just set that to be auto and just make sure that's keeping in place for the rest of these here, just so I can see what's actually being built on my form. But you'll notice that when I actually preview this, it's only going to show each of those steps, but it's just so when we're actually building and designing our form, we can see everything in one place. So let's do one more page here, which we'll call page four, and we'll make this, how did you hear about us? And again, we'll change the icon and the styling. Okay, cool. So now we've got our four pages set up. Now we need to make sure that each one of these inputs here also have a unique ID, especially if I've copied and pasted some fields here, they might actually have the same ID. For example, this drop down here has the ID of location. And this, how did I hear about us also has the ID of location. So when I actually submit that form, they're gonna be like merged together and it's not really gonna be able to pick which one is the correct one. So we'll rename this and we'll call this budget. And we'll call this referral. Okay, cool. Now I can also style our previous next and um, page label here. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and do that. So let's actually make this black. Let's make it a bit bolder. And it's a little too big for my liking. So I'm gonna drag it down. And we can also set the text here as well. So maybe I just want to show just the number. So one out of four. And then we can style our previous and next buttons as well if we need to. And we've got a bunch of options here as well. Like, do we want to auto hide it on the first or last page? So there's a few different settings that we can play with here. So let's just preview this again and start to see how it's looking. So we've got our first page, our second page where we can select a country. We can select our budget and then we can select how we hear about us. But you'll notice that we still need a way to submit our form. And that's why we've kept our submit button off the canvas here. So I'm gonna create one more page, which is gonna essentially act as a confirmation page. So we'll call this page five. And essentially what I'll do is just have the submit button on this page. So we'll drag that in here and we'll relabel this. And we'll also give this another icon and let's just increase the gap here as well because everything's looking a little bit close together. Cool. All right. Let's preview this once again. So we have our name and email. We'll select a country. We'll select a budget. We'll select how'd you hear about us. And then we've got our submit button. Okay, cool. And now what I can do is put back the height of my actual container here. So I'm gonna go back and set the height to be 100 VH. And you notice we're obviously gonna get this overflow starting to happen, but do not stress, everything's going to fit just fine. And I just need to set all my items to be spaced between. Then when I preview this, everything is now looking just fine. So the last thing I need to do is actually make it that I can submit this form. So I'm actually gonna go into that form uh, holder and I'm gonna set my form destination in the properties panel on the right hand side. So we're gonna make it send to my email and we'll just set that up here. And we're also going to set up a redirect. So on submission, we want it to go somewhere else. So we're gonna go on submission, we want to go to a new page, which we can create right now, which we'll call success. And then if I go back to my form here, I'll set that redirect to go to the success page. And let's quickly just design that up. Okay, so now let's actually try this again. Let's preview this. Let's start filling out our information. Click on next, it takes us to the next page. We can select our country. So I'm gonna select Australia. We're gonna select our budget, which will be option B. And we'll select an option here for how someone heard about us. And then lastly, we can submit our answer. And then on succession of that submit button, we'll actually get taken to that success page, which now if I go to my email, you'll notice that we actually get that full form submission by each of the fields. So nothing's getting lost and everything's functioning like a true multi-step form.
Now, quick note about Framer Forms as well. If you want to create a multi-step form, you actually need the basic tier. And there's lots of different inputs that you can add here as well, from dropdowns, text areas, phone numbers, image selects, even recapture to kind of prevent spam on your website. There's a lot of different stuff to explore. And like I mentioned, you can connect it to your Google Analytics so you can really track how someone is progressing in your form. Or there's a bunch of like URL data collectors as well, which you can use, which can be really powerful for creating more powerful forms. And that's how you create a true multi-step form in Framer the right way. Now, if you want access to Framer Forms, I'll include a link down below. And if you are interested in more Framer content just like this one, consider subscribing to the channel because we're putting out new Framer content every single week. But until next time, I'll catch you later.